everybody, we're back. So I'm going to do a video that I said I would never do because it's just kind of a pointless thing to argue about. But I keep seeing people that just maybe don't understand how it all works. So here I am doing a video on it. Um, look, I'm really super lucky, okay? I've got like 3,800 followers on YouTube. I've got thirty about 3,800 followers on Facebook. And there's a percentage of those people that are aerospace engineers. There are aeronautical engineers. Uh, one of them is helping design the parachute system on the Orion capsule. Um, I've got some really rock star friends, but there's the majority of you that follow me to learn. And once in a while, five or six people pop up and they just say things that are kind of not right. And I'm not putting them down. They just don't understand how it works. So what we're going to talk about is adverse yaw. Okay, what causes an airplane to have adverse yaw? So many people think it's in the, side, the, the design of your vertical stabilizer and it has nothing to do with the tail of the airplane. What causes adverse yaw? Your vertical stabilizer there is for the stability of the airplane going through the wind. So to hold heading, you need a vertical stabilizer. If you see your plane always doing this, you may have a problem in your vertical stab. Okay, not enough square inches or square feet. You might have turbulated air going back there and it's bouncing off the sides of the stab, off the fuselage. There's all sorts of things that can kind of cause that wallowing. Okay, um, good flight augmentation systems like uh, gyros can fix that, but I have never built an airplane that needed that to fly right okay but let's talk about adverse yaw what is adverse yaw so what happens is both wings are producing lift and they're both going through the air they both got the same friction they go both got the same uh it takes the same energy to push it through the air okay make sure you can see this so when this aileron comes down this wing produces more lift which means it's working harder it creates more drag this wing when the aileron goes up is, is needing less uh, energy to go through the air. So when you do this, the airplane does adverse yaw. Now, it doesn't matter what your stab shaped like, it, nothing's gonna stop that unless you put some rotor in, okay? Full-scale airplanes, actually, some Piper airplanes have differential ailerons to try to com combat that. The aileron going down will go down less than the one coming up. So it's less drag up here and they're trying to produce more drag with the deflection. Um, also, some ailerons, the leading edge of them, will go down into the wind stream. So if this is the aileron, when it goes down, it goes into the wind stream creating drag. A few airplanes will actually mix a little bit of rudder into it, into your, your yoke. Um, jumbo jets and everything use these spoilers and everything on the wing. They're all mixed into the computers to stop the adverse yaw. But on model aircraft, if you're a designer and you're designing one, and you design an airplane that's got really... <coughs> excuse me, really bad adverse yaw, it's because the size of your ailerons, the deflection of your ailerons, the placement of the ailerons, um, it could have to do with, uh, basically it comes down to your ailerons. Anytime that they go into the wind stream, they're creating either lift or drag or they're killing lift, but they're doing something in the wind stream. So the size of your tail, even though it might make adverse yaw a little bit less if you had a big old honk and barn door out here, the design of the tail has nothing to do with adverse yaw. It has to do with the stability of the aircraft going through the air. So kind of in closing here, because I don't want to make this a big video. Um, if you've got little bitty ailerons way out here on the end of the wing, and you've got a really long wing, so let's say you've got a lot of flap, a lot of flap, and then a little bit of aileron out here. When that aileron goes down, it's because of the moment arm, it's going to produce a ton of drag out there on the tip that plane could potentially have a lot of adverse yaw, okay? I have found that when I've designed airplanes that have big, big barn door ailerons, when those suckers go up or down, it creates massive adverse yaw. But I'm a kick-ass pilot. I know how to fly rudder. So if you see my MSL-2 fly, which, hang on a minute, let me pop up my MSL-2 here for a minute. Uh, here's my MSL-2. Let's see if I'm doing this right. So my MSL-2 here has big old ailerons out on the end of the wings, but I had a big rudder so that I can feed it in when I'm flying it and not have bad adverse yaw. Um, Why well, I would control the adverse yaw. So hopefully this makes it clear to everybody because I'm trying to say this as productive as I can, uh, but if you've been one of my longtime followers, you understand my 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 brain the way it works but 
there are certain there's for certain things that go on with airplanes that people just assume and you know you would think when you see an airplane doing this that it's because you've screwed up your vertical stabilizer well the reason the rudder's back there is so you can counteract that okay but if, and i've seen well actually i designed an airplane a long time ago as a version of a trilander if you don't know what the trilander is it had an engine on each wing and an engine on the vertical stab stab stabilizer and it was like a puddle jumper down in the caribbean for flying people between islands when i put my engine pod on there i basically removed half of my vertical stabilizer now the rudder still worked great but when I would fly o right overhead at about 100 feet, you just saw the plane always doing this, wandering. And it's because of all that garbage air that was going around that nacelle on the vertical stab. It wasn't staying even over the, um, um, over the vertical stabilizer where the nacelle was because there's an engine with a propeller in front of on a trilander. What I did was I extended the rudder by another four inches up, and it all went away. So now I had stability flying straight. Um, a lot of people talk about the GB being so unstable, and it's because of the size of the tail. It has nothing to do with the size of the tail, people. Uh, I mean, the um, uh, uh, adverse yaw. Nothing to do with the vertical stab. Back in the late 80s, 90s, I had a small GB, and the ailerons, if you look at the GB, I mean, they are massive ailerons on the GB. They really are. So when that aileron comes down here and this aileron goes up that's what create the adverse yaw on a gb but if you're flying overhead and you see it doing this kind of number well then you do have something that's a little bit wonky in the tail so i hope this makes sense everybody if you ever go up in a general aviation airplane just sit there and don't touch the rudder and roll it like this and watch how much your nose starts wandering around the horizon that's you dumping those ailerons uh, in the air and it and it causing the the whole nose to go probably five or ten degrees to the left and right now if you're really good you can take the rudder and you can do it so that you're just doing this and that's a practice that a lot of us full-scale pilots used to do just to try to hold heading um, but when it comes to model aircraft design uh, and I'm doing a video right now series I'm only on video two but I'm going to talk about the math depending on the length of your wing and the cord of your wing, how big your vertical stabilizer has got to be. There's some really simple math there. And as long as you've got a blended fuselage so that a portion of that tail is the same flat surface that you wanted in the vertical stabilizer in your air cran, a la a GB. Keep in mind the GB's real rudder is this and this little point back here. Okay, so there's not a big flat vertical stabilizer on it. But I hope this helps everybody understand this, and I'm doing this video to try to help everybody learn. And have an awesome day, and rock on. See you next time.